Namaste everyone. How are you all? Welcome to my channel. My name is Shubham Malok. And uh, today in this video, I am going to talk about a very new topic about which I am sure 90% of you haven't heard before. And that is Ghata Chakra. So this Ghata Chakra, you know, what is this Ghata Chakra? This Ghata Chakra is basically a table. You know, earlier astrologers, you know, I think in astrology, we, you know, all of many of us, like, you know, I am talking of older generation from which I belong to. Older generations, not by age, but, you know, depending on when people have started doing Jyotish. So now in the astrological world, 80% of the astrologers are those who have started doing Jyotish in last 5-10 years. But like people like me who have started doing Jyotish between 2000 to 2010, I think all of us have started uh, doing Jyotish, uh, learning Jyotish, being inspired by, you know, someone around us whom we have seen predicting very well. I myself belong to a parampara, so this is a family thing for us. But 80% of the astrologers from 2000 to 2010 era who started learning astrology, practicing astrology at that point of time, somehow, you know, got impressed from a very good astrologer in their area and then started doing Jyotish. Now, this is very, you know, this is very amazing. Between 1950s to 1980s, there were many predictors. And it was actually the time when you can go to a village, go to a temple and can find an old astrologer who predicts very well, who is a master into prediction. And you know, these astrologers use some tables. Some tables which are not found in the classics of astrology, but are developed by them. One such table is Ghata Chakra. In our tradition, in our parampara, it is being used since long, more than 200 years, it seems like. This Ghata Chakra. Now, what is this Ghata Chakra? This Ghata Chakra is basically a table for every Rashi. And you know what does Ghat means? Ghat means attack. So imagine a tiger hiding behind bushes, hiding behind grass, just waiting to attack a prey. Now this tiger hidden behind the shrubs, waiting to attack his prey is called as a tiger in Ghat. A tiger who is just looking for the right opportunity to hit. Looking at the right opportunity to kill, looking at the right opportunity to slay. This is what Ghat means. Now this Ghat Chakra is basically a set of table which tells for every moon sign a particular month, a particular tithi, a particular nakshatra, a particular day, a particular yoga, a particular karan. And two ascendants, one male ascendant, one female ascendant will be dangerous. Now the prime uses of it is whenever you are going to do something. The prime uses goes into Muhurta. You know, the real uses of astrology, why in earlier times it was necessary for everyone to learn astrology. Why it was compulsory to learn astrology for everyone, it was for Muhurta purpose only. <laughs> See, I should tell you, prediction is astrologer's game. Right? Only astrologers should know how to predict. It is not for every common person. Now, Prashna also comes into prediction. Mundane chart predicting the future of nations also come into predictions. However, in the ancient Gurukuls of India, it was necessary for everyone to study astrology for 2-3 years. And why it was necessary? It was necessary for the purpose of finding Muhurta. Muhurta basically tells you what is the right time, what is the correct time to do anything. Even the development of astrology, the research of astrology in Vedas happens for only this purpose. Because the Vedic sage wants to know the good time to do the sacrifice. So I think Vedic sages have found that sometime by the rituals, gods become happy and sometimes by the rituals, gods do not become easily happy. It takes more effort. 
so they developed astrology to find the auspicious time to find the right time when they can make the god happy with less effort now the point is if you are hard working if you are dedicated gods will be happy from you either today or tomorrow with some more effort they will be happy but the point is that you give minimum effort and get maximum result this is the basis behind astrology minimum effort maximum result for this purpose astrology was developed that is muhurta and if you actually want to use astrology for your benefit use astrology for you know to grow in life to be more fortunate and the thing less hard work more result what we call fortune you should use it for finding the correct time when you should do something when you should start doing something undertake something right muhurta is the prime uses or muhurta is the stuff muhurta is that part of astrology which benefits the human life to the maximum which is why everyone should know astrology now the basic point is the uses of the ghata chakra the first and the foremost uses is whenever you are going to do something most importantly when it is a dangerous work right for an example like traveling now traveling is very common all of us travel but we also know that you know meeting an accident meeting and mishap while traveling is quite common right so before doing anything which is prone to accidents you should check this ghata chakra now i should tell you the silver lining just in the starting in the ghata chakra there are a total of eight elements not eight elements six elements to be honest with you tithi var nakshatra yoga karan and the month so these six factors are there any one of these six factor is not that dangerous but if two or more than two factors out of these six factors meet on a particular muhurta then that muhurta becomes very bad and that muhurta makes you susceptible to attack susceptible to misfortune susceptible to mishap so you should be avoiding it you should be very strongly avoiding it specifically when doing something which puts you in a danger of or which where you suspect that things can go wrong this that is the prime uses that is the main purpose of ghata chakra now other than that in this ghata chakra as i will share the table with you shortly what you will find is you will find a bad rashi female a bad rashi male so in earlier times it was also used for match making so you see you are a male you are going to marry a female now see the canons of match making are altogether different which person to match which person to marry according to their horoscope is altogether different scenario but this person which is prohibited in the ghata chakra as per the gender so if you are going to marry a man see the male rashi if you are going to marry a woman see the female rashi should be strongly avoided what i have seen in matchmaking is when you get married to someone <clears throat> who have their moon or their ascendant in the rashi which features in ghata chakra then in that scenario what happens is it becomes a dangerous marriage what do i mean by dangerous marriage in such cases even the murder of the spouse or you know the person the spouse murdering you <clears throat> can be the case if not that then extreme level of beating physical violence torture sabotaging blackmailing is generally noticed hence while matching the horoscopes and while choosing the life partner also this should be kept into consideration now there is one more particular point that you have to keep into mind now in this table of course only the rashi is mentioned but a tithi is also mentioned 
if the person that you want to marry is also born in the rashi which is in the ghata table is also born in the nakshatra which is in ghata table is also born on a weekday which is on a ghata table it becomes even more and more dangerous but before considering that always keep in mind that the rashi in match making the ghat rashi which is dangerous is prime so ghat nakshatra added to ghat tithi plus ghat ascendant or ghat moon sign in matching can be very dangerous because there are three ghat principles which will which will make it very dangerous very bad but if only ghat tithi if only the spouse is born in ghat tithi he is born in ghat nakshatra whereas the spouse is not born into ghat rashi moon sign or ghat ascendant in that scenario despite the fact that ghat nakshatra and ghat tithi is matching the match making will not be dangerous basically speaking that the ghat ascendant and the ghat moon sign is the prime thing that should be considered at the time of match making not only this now basically the point is you know if you are going through a bad dashantar you know the third uses of it so if you are going through a bad dashantar dasha this will because ghat have the nature of bad ghat indicate bad results ghat indicates malefic result right so if you are going through a bad dashantar dasha if the dasha indicates that something bad is going to happen when that bad will happen so because the ghat table indicate those dangerous days those days which are prone to mishap with dasha antar dasha and even with transit with gochar what you can say if one is going through a bad dasha antar dasha then he is prone to suffering more on those tithi which feature in the ghat table on those week days which feature in the ghat table on those days when moon goes to the nakshatra which is featured in the ghat table and so on and so forth so basically the ghat table also helps you in timing events or timing mishaps specifically in bad dasha antar dasha also what i have generally seen what i have generally noticed that you know we want to do remedy every one of us want to do remedy every one of us do remedy as well say you are born into cancer rashi you have your moon in cancer in that condition the second tithi the seventh tithi and the eleventh tithi of either shukla paksh or krishna paksh is bad so doing remedies on the second tithi dwadashi seventh tithi saptami and 11th tithi ekadashi will not be good it will not yield you any result you will do remedy but only get disappointed as the results of remedies will not be felt the way you want it to right this will not happen so while doing remedies purchasing a gem stone starting a mantra visiting a temple going on a pilgrimage while doing the remedy commencing the remedy also you should specifically avoid those tithis which fall in the ghat table those nakshatras which fall in the ghat table those weekdays which fall in the ghat table those yogas panchang yogas and those karnas and those ascendants which fall in the ghat table not only that you know there is a particular concept i think many of you are aware of it in north india it is very strong that one should not cut their hair shave chhor karm it is called on tuesdays and thursdays this is this is a concept now basically the point is it is considered that you know in human body there are many you know animals bacteria etc which is living over human body now many of them die a natural death as human cells you know die every day but it is their natural death but still when you use a knife to shave it is you who are creating their death who are causing their death 
this is the particular reason i think in jainism many people the munis the sages don't shave generally is what i have heard at least right so the point is in our life we don't wish to but we are sometime forced to do things which we don't want to do we are forced to do things which we know that will have some negative impact but still we have to do it right so basically this is an accumulation of sin now see this is a very common factor if you are into police just giving an example you have to also you know you have to also scold people to teach them a lesson now scolding someone is not a good karma but of course you are forced to do that because of the nature of the work that you do this leads you into accumulation of sins and many such sins we also commit right shaving the hairs etc on this ghat days the days when the days of the ghat nakshatra ghat tithi ghat var ghat yoga ghat karan you should avoid accumulation of sins as much as possible if you know that this is a bad work that i am for example anger you should completely avoid being angry abusing people or saying bad to anyone or even teaching a lesson to anyone on the ghat tithi day on the ghat nakshatra day on the ghat week day on the ghat in the ghat month in the ghat yoga day in the ghat karan day so accumulation of sins or if any type of bad karma is done on these days when the ghat is going on then it becomes very pathetic very problematic very pain causing to the native hence it should be avoided so these are all the uses of this ghat table and there are many more uses but i think those learned people who watch my channel are able to understand how to use it now coming to the point directly now this ghat table is generally based on the moon sign it is based on where your moon is placed in but if you know how to find the stronger between ascendant and moon you can use it from the ascendant as well if you don't know how to find stronger between ascendant and moon that means you haven't seen other of my videos which you should do in that particular scenario always remember that ghat table is based on moon sign so basically those born with moon in aries the month when sun is in libra is the ghat month for them the first sixth and eleventh tithi of any paksh is ghat tithi for them Sunday is the Ghat Var, Magha is the Ghat Nakshatra, Vishkumbh is the Ghat Yoga, Bawa is the Ghat Karan. Females born in Aries ascendant and male born in Aries ascendant also are Ghat problematic for them. For people born in Taurus ascendant, when Sun goes to, when Sun transits through Scorpio sign that particular month, remember that Vedic months are based on the transit of Sun through a Rashi. the 5th 10th and 15th tithi saturday hasta nakshatra shukla yoga shakuni karan female born in sagittarius ascendant and male born in virgo ascendant so moon sign also females born in sagittarius sign male born in virgo moon sign are ghat problem creating for them for those born in gemini ascendant when sun transits through gemini on the second seventh and eleventh tithi of any paksh on monday in swati nakshatra parig yog kaulav karan or female born in sagittarius ascendant or moon sign male born in aquarius ascendant or moon sign are dangerous problem creating for them for people born in cancer ascendant when sun transits to sagittarius rashi that month is dangerous second seventh and eleventh tithi of any paksh either bright paksh or dark paksh is problematic for them वेडनसडे अनुराधा नक्षत्र व्याघात योगा नागाकरण फीमेल बॉर्न इन पाइसिस एसेंडेंट और मून साइन एंड मेल बॉर्न इन लियो एसेंडेंट एंड मून साइन आर बैड फॉर पीपल बॉर्न इन कैंसर मून साइन आई थिंक आई वाज टॉकिंग ऑफ जेमिनी पीपल बॉर्न इन जेमिनी मून साइन फॉर देम व्हेन सन ट्रांजिट्स थ्रू जेमिनी राशि दैट पर्टिकुलर मंथ 
सेकेंड सेवंथ एंड इलेवंथ तिथि ऑफ बोथ ब्राइट हाफ एंड डार्क हाफ मंडे स्वाति नक्षत्र परियोग कौलव करण वुमेन बॉर्न इन सेजिटेरियस एसेंडेंट और मून साइन और मेल बॉर्न इन एक्वेरियस एसेंडेंट और मून साइन आर घात डेंजरस फॉर देम फॉर पीपल बॉर्न इन लियो मून साइन व्हेन सन ट्रांजिट्स थ्रू टॉरस राशि द थर्ड एट एंड थर्टींथ तिथि ऑफ एनी पक्ष सैटरडे मूल नक्षत्र धृति योगा भव करण स्कॉर्पियो फीमेल्स बॉर्न इन स्कॉर्पियो एसेंडेंट और मून साइन और मेल बॉर्न इन मेल बॉर्न इन कैप्रिकॉन एसेंडेंट और मून साइन आर डेंजरस प्रॉब्लमेटिक फॉर देम For people born in Virgo ascendant, when Sun transits through Leo, that happens around August. That month is dangerous for them. Fifth, tenth, and fifteenth tithi of both Sukla Paksh and Krishna Paksh is dangerous for them. Saturday is bad. Shravan Nakshatra should be avoided. Shukla Yoga should be avoided. Call of Karan should be avoided. Females born in Scorpio ascendant or Moon sign should be avoided, and male born in Gemini ascendant or Moon sign should also be avoided. remember the point one of this ghat factor is not dangerous meeting of two or more than two of the ghat factors are dangerous so you say for virgo ascendant people fifth tithi falling on a saturday is dangerous on a saturday when moon goes to shravan nakshatra that is dangerous shukla yoga on a saturday is dangerous right kaulav karan on a saturday is dangerous right this is what you have to understand mix matching of or coming together of two or more than two factors from this ghat table is actually very very dangerous one singular factor of course will come often so not much to worry about one singular factor for people born in libra moon sign when sun transits through capricorn that happens around 14th january to 14th february that month is dangerous the 4th 9th and 14th tithi of both shukla paksh and krishna paksh is dangerous thursday sadbhishya nakshatra shukla yoga taitil karan is dangerous female born in pisces ascendant or moon sign and male born in sagittarius ascendant and moon sign are dangerous for people born with moon in scorpio rashi when sun transits through virgo rashi in transit that month is dangerous First, sixth, and eleventh tithi of bright and dark fortnight are dangerous. Friday, Revati Nakshatra, Vatipati Yoga, Gar Karan. Female born in Sagittarius ascendant or Moon sign, and male born in Taurus ascendant or Moon sign are dangerous, problematic for them. For people born with Moon in Sagittarius Rashi, when Sun transits through Cancer, that month is dangerous for them. Third, eighth, and thirteenth tithi of both dark and bright fortnight are dangerous for them. Friday, Bharni Nakshatra, Vajra Yoga, Taitil Karan is dangerous for them. Men, women born in Virgo ascendant or Moon sign, and male born in Pisces ascendant and Moon sign are also problematic for them. For people born with Moon in Capricorn, when Sun transits through the Rashi of Aries between April to May, fifteenth April to fifteenth May, that month is problematic for them. Fourth, ninth, and fourteenth tithis of either dark fortnight or bright fortnight are dangerous for them. Tuesday, Rohini Nakshatra, Vedrati Yoga, Sukuni Karan is dangerous for them. Female born in Scorpio ascendant or Moon sign, or male born in Leo ascendant or Moon sign are also problematic for them. For those born with their Moon in Aquarius, the month when the time when Sun transits through Pisces Rashi, that happens around, I think. Twelfth of uh, that happens from fifteenth of March to fifteenth of April is dangerous for them. Third, eighth, and thirteenth tithi of bright and dark fortnight is bad for them. Thursday, Adra Nakshatra, Gandhi Yoga, Kimstu Karan is bad for them. Female born in Gemini ascendant or Moon sign are bad for them, and male born in Sagittarius ascendant or Moon sign are also problematic for them. For people born with their Moon in Pisces, Rashi. when sun transits through the rashi of aquarius between 15th of february to 15th of march that time is problematic for them fifth tenth and 15th tithi of shukla paksh and krishna paksh is also dangerous for them friday asalesha nakshatra vajra yoga chatushpad karan is also problematic for them female born in aquarius ascendant or moon sign or male born in aquarius ascendant or moon sign are also problematic for them now there is one more point <clears throat> 
there are two, three more things that I will specifically want to talk about. For an example, for Aquarius people, for moon in Aquarius, you know that women born in Gemini ascendant or Gemini moon sign are bad for you. So if any of your relatives have moon or ascendant in Gemini, you should avoid following their advices if you want your well-being. Secondarily, if you are born into Aquarius ascendant or moon sign, and because for Aquarius, Gemini becomes the female Ghatha sign. If Venus is situated in Gemini, that indicates a female relative spouse. Or if moon is relate, if moon is situated in Gemini, that indicates a female relative mother. In this scenario, wife or mother will not be good for you. That basically means their advices will not be good for you. And you will not derive happiness from them. It indicates that you will have a strained relationship from your wife if there is Venus in Gemini for Aquarius people or you will have strained relationship with mother if there is Moon in Gemini for Aquarius people. Right? These Ghat Rashis are very bad. They should be strongly avoided. And if you are having your Moon into Pisces, then make sure when Sun goes through the Aquarius Rashi, don't start any work. On 5th, 10th and 15th Tithi, don't start any work. Avoid Fridays. Avoid when Moon is transiting Ashlesha Nakshatra. Avoid when it is Vajra Yoga in Panchang. Avoid when it is Chatuspat Karan in Panchang. Avoid partnership or marriage with a female born in Aquarius Ascendant or Moon sign. And also avoid marriage and partnership or even friendship with male born in Aquarius Ascendant or Moon sign. This Ghatha Chakra was the tool I am using the word was because now it is forgotten. But in earlier times, it was the tool which every astrologer remembered by heart. And based on this, they advised people who come to seek advice from them about the time when they should do things. And this was the particular reason you will see that people between 50s to 80s those who started their business between 50s to 80s, those who got married between 50s to 80s, 80% 80 of them, whoever belonged to that area where lived a famous astrologer way back then are having a better life. Because if you are not using the Ghat Chakra, if you are not using this Ghat table in your life, then you are just standing in front of danger. You are inviting a mishap, which if you know the table, can be avoided. That is the prime purpose of astrology, to educate people about the strength and weakness of time so that you make better choices, better decisions, and live a good life. Thank you for watching my video.